Hey guys, um, I tried to put up the video with this song yesterday, but um, Facebook kicked me off and YouTube kicked me off because of the song. So I just I decided the way to get around that was to sing it myself. So I'll do that later, but let's pray first before I begin this uh, sermon. Father, I praise you and I worship you, God. Lord Jesus, let me let me be an oracle of you and let me let me say what you want me to say. Um, and I just bless you for the lives um, you're gonna change and for who for who you're gonna touch with this sermon. And Lord, I just let Rachel die and let Jesus live through me, Lord God. I pray that you'll just use me as an oracle. I'm a wide open vessel. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Amen. Hi, guys. Um, as I said, I tried to do this video yesterday, but uh, YouTube um, and Facebook both kicked me off because of the copyright laws because it was a song I used. So I'm going to uh, sing the song, Cry Pretty Myself. Uh, but first, before I play the song, I'm gonna uh, share a little bit of my personal story um, with you guys. Um, in, um, I, let me back up first. Um, in June, not in, let me back up before June, um, I, I love food, okay, and, um, in June, so, before June, before June 5th, I would eat whatever I want, all the rice and everything, I would have bowls of rice, I would have basically anything I want I would have uh, if you can believe this I can't believe it now but I would have three pieces of pizza and a whole bucket of chicken wings and I thought I was invincible um, but I went in for a checkup just just uh, ordinary um, checkup and I got the results of my blood test and it turns out that all those carbs I was eating, all that uh, nice lemonade I was eating, was drinking and all those nice sugary drinks, um, it caught up with me. Um, I was told in June 5th, I remember because I was on the doctor's table and the doctor said to me, um, they were doing some other exam and the doctor said, I said, everything's fine, right? And he said, I need to talk to you. Uh, and I was like, okay, you know, when the doctor says, I need to talk to you, you kind of, okay, what does he need to talk to me about? Um, he said, Rachel, you have type 2 diabetes and I was like what me I said I'm only 33 how can this be he's like your sugars are 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 8.8 .8, and that's a high sugar um a regular adult sugar level is between six and seven anything above seven your sugar is high so after he told me this I was shocked I was totally shocked I remember um, he couldn't even take my blood pressure I'm like oh Lord what am I gonna do what am I gonna do what am I gonna do so after getting this news, I had to change my diet radically. I had to, I remember the day I found out I had diabetes. I found, I, 
I had I had my last right rice rice crispy swear and then I called my mom and I told her the news. I was devastated. I couldn't believe that diabetes could happen to me. And um I was so I had to do a radical diet change like everything like all the snacks that I loved and all the popcorn that not all the snacks that I loved but most of them and most of the white rice white pasta that I had to that I had in my pantry had to go and because I had to make such a radical diet change um I it was devastating for me so um fast forward to Saturday I was in the grocery store um uh, up until this point I went to the grocery store I no I ordered go grocery gateway which is um, here in Canada, uh, you order your groceries and, and they come and bring them to your house. Or my mom would go and pick up my groceries. But Saturday, I went with my mom to pick up my groceries. And going through the aisles, uh, excuse me, going through the aisles, um, I was... It just hit me, all the stuff that I used to love, all the stuff that I used to have, all the stuff that I used to uh, eat and have no uh, conscious thought about it. I couldn't eat anymore and at that point I almost broke down in tears because um, for someone who loves to eat her chips and her uh, salty popcorn and sugary drinks, it was hard. Um, before I get emails saying I'm so sorry for you, how are you doing? I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna tell you guys that I'm doing well. I have learned to control my diet, and I've learned to. Um, control what I'm eating and my last doctor's visit um, my sugar had went from an 8.8 .8 to now it's 7.3 so it's normalizing now just because of my diet and before diabetes I weighed I weighed about uh, 170 pounds, which is for my height and for my weight was a little overweight. So I lost 10 pounds. I went down to 158. So I'm doing good. I'm doing good with the, with the health change. It's been about two months now. I'm doing good with the health change. And I, I'm, there, it's still a struggle some days, but um, God has been helping me through and it's just been so great. And um, I wanted to put up this sermon and, and say, you know what? Uh, sometimes we hide behind our pain thinking we don't want to bother people we don't want to do this we don't want to do that we don't want to show people that we're hurting we just want to deal with it ourselves and I think that's one of the main tools of the en enemy um, is to keep us isolated so that we can think we're not alone. Yesterday, I was telling a friend about my diabetes diagnosis and she 
she was able to offer me so much support and so much love. She's like, it, it'll be hard for a little while, but you can do this. You'll do it. You'll, you'll do it and you'll be stronger for it. And basically, um, yeah, so I'm saying when you have a struggle, whether it be with your health or with anything in your life, find someone that you can talk to, that you can confide in. Don't hide it because uh, pain eats at you and pain destroys your life and for me I needed a community of people to help me I needed the the um, attendants I live with to help me I needed doctors and me um, medical professionals to help me deal with this so it's because of the help of God and of these wonderful people in my life, my family, the attendants that I live with, um, that the attendants that work in the building where I live. It's it's because of them, partly because of them that I'm doing so good, and and it's in community where we can find true healing. And some people just hide pain. They hide pain and they think no one can see it. But I'm telling you, a lot of people can see it. I'm not saying to tell your business to everyone because you, you can't tell your business to everyone. You can't trust everyone. But find someone to lay yourself bare with. Find someone to talk to find someone to be open with and honest with. First of all, the first someone you should find to be open and honest with is God. A lot of people even try to hide from God. God knows what you're dealing with. God knows what your struggles are, but he can't heal it unless you reveal it. Um, like, cause there's no sense in hiding what he already knows is there. So when, when you have a struggle or anything, just lay it bare before the Lord. And you can be honest with the Lord. If you can't be honest with anyone else, you can be honest with the Lord. And he's just waiting for you to be honest. It's like he's a good father who sees you in pain. But he wants you to start a conversation and wants you to open up. And then after you open up and reveal it to God, he will direct you on who to talk to. He will direct you on where to go to solve your um, problem or situation. Don't stay in isolation. Don't, don't stay in just like, this is me, this is my problem confide in somebody because when you uncover it when you reveal it you'll understand that you're not alone you'll understand that there's a whole community of people that are just like you going through the same challenges as you going through the same health challenges as you going through the same um financial challenges as you be encouraged God is there and remember I'm praying for you and please keep your faith because when you're going through something faith will will get you through hope will start you off but you need faith to really pull you through faith to say that this won't be the end of me this will be the beginning of me. This will be a testimony to help other people. I hope my sermon and my, my testimony um, 
will help somebody today to come out from their cave or come out from their closet and be open about what's bothering them. Be transparent because if we're transparent, then healing, then real healing and real miracles can begin. But if we stay in the closet, we'll stay in our situation. We'll stay in our mess and God doesn't want that for us. So be blessed. And before I sign off, um, I don't really need to, but just for fun, I'm going to play um, my cover of Cry Pretty by Carrie Underwood. Take care. Bye. Sorry, but I'm just a girl, not usually the kind to show my heart to the world. I'm pretty good at keeping it together. I hold my composure for worse or for better. I apologize if you don't like what you see, but sometimes my emotion get the best of me falling apart is as human as it gets you can't hide it you can't fight what the truth is you can pretty lie and say it's okay you could pretty smile and just walk away pretty much fake away through anything but you can't Dress it up and lift the right stone to do matter if you in a crowd or home all alone. It's all the same. When you're looking in the mirror, a pit a picture of pain. So let it flow like the river. You can pretty lie and say it's okay, you can pretty smile. And just walk away, pretty much fake your way through anything, but you can't cry pretty. You can't turn off the foot when the tip breaks, when all your mascara is going to waste when things get ugly. You just gotta face that you can't cry.
See you next time.